was holding the youngest Mia and almost asleep when my husband came home and suddenly raised his voice. Honey, you're taking a leisurely nap while your husband just got back from work. Emma, our middle child, froze in shock, and Amelia, our eldest, glared at Dad while huddling close to her sister. I'm sorry. As I tried to stand up, I felt dizzy and staggered. Sneering at me, Stephen pulled out an envelope. I think it's time for a wife as sloppy as you to leave this house. Sign this and get out quickly. The envelope he handed me, with a smug smile, contained divorce papers. I twisted my face in frustration. Please, at least let me take the kids with me. You think I trust you with the kids? I beg you, please. I clung to his feet, pleading. Then, pushing Emma towards me, he said, You can take her and the baby, but not Amelia. Stephen then grabbed Amelia from behind. No, let go of her. She's useful. I'll take good care of her. I tried to pull Amelia away, but Stephen pushed me back. Hey, Amelia, if you don't obey me, who knows what I'll do to your mom. He was using me to threaten Amelia. How could he? If you care about Amelia, you'll leave right away. With those words, he left the house. Holding my sobbing children, I started packing. I'm sorry, Amelia. I promise I'll come back for you. I hugged Amelia tightly, looking sad, and we spent our last night together. My name is Grace. I'm a typical housewife, living with my husband, mother-in-law Aria, and our three daughters, working part-time three or four days a week. I met Stephen at work, where I was a full-time employee when we got married. We dated and married smoothly, though we were in different departments. Three months into our marriage, Stephen suggested, I want three kids. He often showed he liked children, so I thought we'd have kids someday. But balancing work and parenting worried me. I think so, too, someday, but we just got married, and I'm handling a big project now. Expressing my concern only made it worse. Seeing my gloom. Don't worry, they're my kids, too. I won't let you raise them alone. Stephen promised. I was grateful to be married to such a kind man, eager to have his children. A year later, when Amelia was born, Stephen took care of her as promised. I tried not to burden him too much, but when Amelia was three months old, his business trips increased. It's unavoidable. I thought it was inevitable, but before I could say anything, he looked uneasy. I had nothing but gratitude for him, and I couldn't understand why my eyes were watering. Don't worry, I won't complain. Just help out as you can, I said, and Stephen smiled relievedly. Of course I'll do that. Jokingly bowing, I pretended to be bossy. Parenting is hard, but with laughter, we could persevere. I was grateful for these happy moments. I'll take care of Amelia today. Why don't you relax a bit? One day, Aria, who lived with us, suggested this, so I went out to dinner with colleagues. Stephen was away on a business trip. I thought of buying Aria some sweets as thanks and having coffee together tomorrow. At the pastry shop, I bought baked goods and headed to meet my colleague. Among the familiar streets, I saw Stephen, but he disappeared into the crowd. He said he was on a business trip. Maybe I was mistaken. I hurried to the meeting place without thinking much. After a lively catch-up with my colleague, I got home just before the date changed. Aria had already put Amelia to bed and was taking a break. Aria, I'm sorry for being late. I apologized and she smiled back kindly. She didn't talk much, but she didn't seem angry or disappointed. I shrugged apologetically 
an aria. Let me know any time. I've never taken care of a girl, so it's fun for me, with the smile said. The next day, I gave Aria the thank you sweets, and while we were having coffee, she asked a question I had never heard before. What kind of person is Stephen to you, Grace? I was surprised that a mother would ask her daughter-in-law about her own son, but I honestly shared my feelings. He's kind and understands my feelings. We do fight occasionally, but he's sincere and always apologizes. Aria just nodded as I spoke and finally murmured, To me, he's an incredibly selfish and arrogant child, prone to emotional outbursts. I had never seen that side of him. Sensing my surprise, she said, Stephen changed after meeting you, Grace. He's even kinder to me now. She smiled brightly and holding my hand said, Thank you for changing, Stephen. I'm counting on you from here on out. Her hand was warm, yet it held a firm strength. When Amelia turned one, I returned to work on a reduced schedule. I had thought Stephen would start helping with housework and childcare again, but that didn't happen. Amelia was an easy child, so I didn't feel burdened and didn't ask for help, but I relied more on Aria, which worried me. When I talked to my husband about it, Mom's always home, so she doesn't mind at all. He responded indifferently. Ah, uh, this must be the arrogance Aria mentioned. It made strange sense to me. I couldn't rely on Aria forever, so I felt relieved when Amelia turned to and started daycare. Back to regular work, my days became hectic. I wanted to ask my husband for help with daycare drop-offs and pickups, but with early meetings and entertaining clients, he often refused, so I decided to handle it myself. Whenever there was a sudden fever and I had to take leave, why is it always me? I started feeling mentally overwhelmed. I just needed someone to listen, even for a little bit. So one day, lying in bed, I talked to Stephen. Hey, you know. But Stephen, without even looking at me, sighed and said, Oh, I have an early day tomorrow. Give me a break. What if Amelia wakes up? He brushed me off coldly. I was shocked. Every day, work, housework, childcare, with no help from anyone. Crying quietly so my husband wouldn't notice, tears streamed down my face. Soon, Stephen's snoring filled the room. The next day, noticing my lack of energy. Grace, I feel good today, so I'll pick up Amelia. I'll also make dinner, Aria said. Amelia was happy, but my husband, who must have seen this, showed no reaction. I felt my feelings for him cooling. Stephen, who'd stopped doing housework, but sought me out at night. Honestly, I was too exhausted from work and childcare. I once refused, and he got terribly upset, so I reluctantly agreed. When I found out I was pregnant with our second child, there was talk of my promotion. I knew Stephen wouldn't help with childcare or housework. It should be the children I choose. I knew that, but... Seeing Stephen carelessly lounging on the sofa, laughing at the TV, I felt hatred for the first time. Even after Emma's birth, Stephen showed no interest. He took Amelia to the park, but wouldn't even change Emma's diaper. Over these five years, I hadn't noticed Stephen gradually changing. That change was too subtly woven into our daily lives, and I had long since fallen out of love. After Emma was born, Stephen stopped coming home even on weekends. Was his department that busy, or was it because he had somewhat succeeded? I had no way of knowing. Judging it impossible to work full-time, I had resigned. 
When I visited my workplace for the first time in a while for the resignation process, I saw a colleague had become a section chief. That was supposed to be my desk. Jealousy clung to me. We're still friends, but I felt disgusted with myself for having those feelings. I prided myself on being able to switch gears quickly. After finishing the procedures, as if shaking something off, I hurried back home to my beloved children. Concerned about relying solely on my husband's income, I discussed with Aria and decided to take a part-time cashier job at a nearby supermarket. I worked about five hours, three or four days a week. Around that time, I noticed a change in Stephen's behavior. As I was preparing dinner one day, he came home and suddenly shouted, I've come home tired from work, and this is the kind of sloppy meal I get. I was puzzled by my suddenly angry husband. Amelia was scared, and Emma started crying at the loudness of his voice. Ah, enough, keep it down. Make her stop crying. What are you shouting about at this hour? Aria came to see what the commotion was about, her gentle tone slightly calming the situation. But Stephen snapped back with a disrespectful tone. Mom, keep out of this. I'm disciplining her because she can't do anything right. His words were like those of a completely different person. Aria, unable to say more, apologized to me with a sorry look and went back to her room. I checked the dinner on the table to see what the problem was. The only difference from usual was some store-bought side dishes. Is it about these supermarket side dishes? I got them for myself to eat. Don't make excuses. He yelled over me as I was speaking. His fierceness nearly made Amelia cry again. This was going nowhere. I decided to just endure it. After yelling his fill, I'm going out to eat tonight. I'll go straight to work tomorrow, he spat out, and left the house like a storm passing. Who was that just now? My husband was supposed to be kinder, not someone who yells. In my days, I remembered what Arya said that day. A selfish, arrogant, and emotional person. Perhaps waiting for the right moment, Arya came over and gently placed her hand on my shoulder. I'm sorry. Her voice faintly uttered, echoed emptily. All I could do was hug my two daughters. From that day, whenever my husband came home, he would complain about the housework and the children's growth. Yet, when in a good mood, he sought me out. I no longer had love for my husband, so it was just agony. But I couldn't resist thinking of the children's lives. Enduring and surviving this hell continued for seven years. Then, I found out I was pregnant with a third child. The baby in my womb was innocent. Emma was happy to have a younger sibling, but Amelia, already in her teens, must have had mixed feelings. They began helping more with housework, caring for my health, and our bond grew stronger. No matter how oppressed I was by my husband, as long as I had my children, I was happy. That alone gave my life meaning. Once the baby was born, I would leave this house. I was not going to sacrifice my life any further. I had confided in Amelia, and she seemed resolved, too. Meanwhile, my health deteriorated. I was hospitalized for threatened preterm labor, but who would do the housework? I couldn't stop worrying. The girls, though more independent, were still only capable of helping to an extent. Aria, having hurt her back years ago, was getting weaker. Reluctantly, I asked my husband to hire a helper. Not for him, but for the children. Perhaps realizing he was at a loss, too. He agreed to hire a helper. 
Being away from my husband, even temporarily, reduced my stress, and my third daughter, Mia, was born safely. However, my health didn't improve much, even after being discharged. I couldn't leave with three children in this condition. Unable to move as I wished, and barely managing the housework, an opportunity came one day. It was when I had finished preparing dinner, waiting for my husband to return. I was holding the youngest Mia and almost asleep when he came home. Then he suddenly raised his voice. Hey, the husband comes home from work and the wife is leisurely napping. In the living room, Emma froze in shock and Amelia glared at dad while huddling close to her sister. Oh, I'm sorry. As I tried to stand, I felt dizzy and staggered. Sneering at me, Stephen pulled an envelope from his bag. I think it's time for a sloppy wife like you to leave this house. Handing me the envelope, he began to speak with a mocking smile on his face. When did he start making such a disgusting face? Sign this quickly and get out. The envelope contained divorce papers. This day had finally come. Along with relief, anxiety also crept in. In my current condition, I wouldn't be able to support the children. Seeing my frustrated face, he laughed even more disgustingly. <laughs> I couldn't comply too readily, or he might retract. I forced out a strained voice. Please. At least let me take the children with me. I had gambled that he would see the children as a nuisance, but his response blew my assumption away. You think I'd trust you with the kids? He smirked again. He must enjoy seeing me suffer. Thinking this, I raised my voice deliberately. Please, I beg you, let me take the children too. I clung to his legs, pleading. Then, pushing Emma towards me while holding her hand, he said, You can take her and the baby. They're not attached to me anyway. I held Emma's shoulder and looked at Amelia. And Amelia? Amelia is not an option. Saying so, Stephen grabbed Amelia from behind. No, let go of her. Amelia tried to escape, but she couldn't match a man's strength. She's a useful kid. I'll take good care of her. I handed Mia to Emma and tried to pull Amelia away from Stephen, but my body was weak and wobbly. Still, I gathered all my strength and confronted Stephen. You. It seemed like he gave in to my persistence, but I was no match for his strength. Persistent, aren't you? I'll pay child support for them, so be quiet. With those words, he pushed me away. Mom? Amelia tried to run to me, but Stephen caught her and uttered something terrifying. Hey, Amelia, if you don't obey me, I don't know what I might do to your mother. He was threatening Amelia using me. What a thing to do. If you care about Amelia, you'll leave right now. Leaving those words, he left the house. Hugging my crying children, I started packing. Mom? Amelia looked at me sadly. I'm sorry, Amelia. I promise. I will definitely come back for you. I hugged Amelia tightly and spent our last night together. The next morning, Aria, having heard everything, haven't much, but handed me an envelope. It was fairly thick, and realizing what it was, I was filled with gratitude. Arya, please take care of Amelia. Nodding silently, Arya lowered her head, and I left with Emma and Mia. After walking a while, I heard a voice calling from behind. Mom? I turned around. Amelia had run outside barefoot. I ran to her and repeated the promise. I will definitely come back for you. 
Amelia didn't say anything more. I took my two daughters and returned to my parents' house, telling them everything. They didn't blame me for coming back. Instead, they were grateful I had managed so far. My parents doted on my daughters, and Emma quickly adapted to the new environment. I left Mia with them and started looking for a job. I had to get Amelia back from that man as soon as possible. My parents understood my determination. I managed to get a job and sued for Amelia's custody, but it was difficult to win. It would have been easier if Stephen had done something wrong, but Amelia was excelling in high school and there were no economic difficulties, so the court saw no problem. I tried to visit Amelia, the timing and Stephen's vigilance made it difficult. I could only talk to her on the phone arranged by Aria, and three years passed. One day, Stephen contacted me. Aria had passed away, and the funeral was over. I had just spoken to her a few weeks ago. Sensing my sadness over the phone, Stephen's tone softened. With Mom gone... It's just Amelia and me in this house. I find myself missing the days when you were here. I was speechless, astonished that that man who had yelled and oppressed me was now saying this. I finally understand the importance of family. Once, he asked if we'd all come back to his place. I decided to play along with his words. Sure, I'd like to pay my respects to Aria and see Amelia too. Stephen seemed pleased on the other end of the phone, unaware of mine and Amelia's plan. When I reunited with Amelia, she was 18 years old. It had been three years since she last saw her sister, Emma, who was now a middle schooler and visibly nervous. Is she a new big sister? Mia didn't even remember Amelia's existence. As we embraced in our long-awaited reunion, Stephen watched, nodding. Family should be together, right? And his eyes filled with tears. Entering the familiar house, I paid my respects to Aria's photo. I still had the envelope she gave me that day, unused. I had planned to use it for myself someday, but now that was impossible. Sighing softly, I heard Stephen's voice from behind. <sighs> she was a kind mom until the end. He said, sitting next to me. I was messed up back then. He continued, glancing at the daughters talking awkwardly in the living room. I don't expect forgiveness or apologizing, but will you spend the rest of your life with me as a family again? Those words were the same as the proposal I heard 20 years ago. Will you spend the rest of your life with me as a family? Back then, I was happy to accept, but now, it brought no joy. The man, now middle-aged and sloppy, waited for my response with an embarrassed look. Was he really the man I once loved? Amelia, having sent Emma and Mia out to play, approached us. I braced myself to tell Stephen, I have no intention of living here with you. Stephen was shocked at my blunt statement. Amelia added, as if to seal the deal, Today, we're asking you to leave, Dad. Uh. Ignoring Stephen's surprised voice, Amelia continued emotionlessly. The house had been inherited by Amelia when Aria passed away. The will was with a lawyer. I own this house. Her voice was calm, devoid of emotion. She recounted the forced separation from me, her mother, and the household chores Stephen pushed on her. Aria had taken over the chores, but... Grandma was treated arrogantly, too. It was really annoying. Amelia's words poured out. Stephen had left all the troubles to Amelia and Aria, claiming work while womanizing. Bringing strange women home every few months, right? 
Her gaze at Stephen was one of utter disdain. During Stephen's absence, Amelia and Aria had devised a plan, assuming they'd live with me again. Of course I knew about it through Aria's contact and phone calls with Amelia. After venting her frustrations, Amelia exhaled deeply. So please pack your things and leave immediately. Stephen was frozen, not moving. He had never expected his daughter to say such things. The unprocessed negative emotions were directed at me. Did you know about this? He glared at me. But I was no longer the person I was back then. Yes, I knew. I knew about your affairs even before our divorce. Stephen's face visibly paled. I had a chance to talk to a colleague when I resigned, who informed me that Stephen was lying about work and business trips to fool around with women. Being at the same workplace, my colleague had doubts about my comments on Stephen's busy work life and shared the truth. Since then, I occasionally received photos of Stephen's infidelity from her. Friends are important. That colleague was now Stephen's superior. Do you know where Mom works now? Stephen was already despondent, unable to even look at us. Friends are important. I was working in a law firm, thanks to that colleague's introduction. Now, never show your face to us again. A few days later, Stephen's belongings were cleared out of the house, and I returned with Emma and Mia. Is this my new home from today? Mia's innocent smile was bright. After that, Stephen lived alone in an apartment. My friend, who is also his female boss, exposed his infidelities with some women, even taking him to court. She told me, laughing, <laughs> I thought something was fishy when you got married. She was the person I dined with when Arya gave me some time off. Since the time I mentioned possibly seeing Stephen in a crowd, she had been keeping tabs on him. She was anxious about when to claim the divorce court security deposit. I'm truly grateful. Although it's been a while since I've seen her, she's always the same. She watches me playing in the cafe's kid's face with a gentle gaze. You rejected a promotion to protect those kids, didn't you? Emma and Amelia approach Mia, who is playing. Make sure you don't let go of your happiness this time. She left the cafe with those words. Amelia is now a college student. She's studying in the law department, possibly aiming to become a lawyer. Even though I work in Stephen's security deposit for the divorce court will be paid, our family still has expenses. As if to fill the gap of the past years, I prepared sandwiches for Amelia. It's embarrassing to have mom's sandwiches even as a college student, she says, but eats them properly every day. Emma started at a new middle school, but was happy to reunite with her elementary school friends. Mia, now six, has started imitating Amelia and Emma's way of talking becoming a bit cheeky. All three are growing up bright and lively. The ones I needed to protect will eventually leave my side, but I'm sure my happiness lies ahead too. I hope their smiles are always there as well. With that prayer, I pay my respects to Aria and head to work.